Whether you like it or not, more AI is being rolled out on Google Ads campaigns, with Google confirming that over the coming weeks and months, they're gonna be rolling out more AI features and more AI capabilities, especially for their search campaigns. Now, what I can also guarantee with this that because of this change, there's gonna be a flood of people complaining on YouTube videos and different comment sections on Reddit blogs and also on Google Ads blogs about these changes. But the reality is, is that these changes are a required change. And the reason for why they're required is because the way that we're completing Google searches is now actually changing. So in order for Google Ads to stay relevant and to stay effective, it also needs to move with these changes. So in this video, I'm not only gonna walk you through what these changes are and hopefully make it so that you don't freak out because you can kind of see that this is a natural step. And then secondly, I'm also gonna be taking you through some key points on how you can continue to see success with Google Ads despite all of these new AI changes coming in. So firstly, let's go through what is actually changing. And for that, let's head straight over to the Google Ads product announcement. So this is the latest announcement that Google had given in May, so just a couple of weeks ago. And what I really wanna focus on here is this section in here where Google said that last year we started rolling out automatically created assets for search ads which use content from your landing pages and existing ads to generate headlines and descriptions. And this is the part here which is gonna be rolling out and being changed very soon, which is when they say, soon we'll be supercharging ACA or automatically created assets with generative AI to more effectively create and adapt search ads based on the context of a query. Now, they give an example in through here where they say that for a user search term or skincare for dry, sensitive skin, AI can use content from your landing page and existing ads to create a new headline that aligns even more closely with the query, such as soothe your dry, sensitive skin. So to put it plainly, over the coming weeks and months, Google will be making changes to your headlines. But to be very clear, they won't just make these changes up from thin air because it'll be grabbing data from two core sources. And the first source is the actual headlines that you've already nominated to Google when you've been creating your responsive search ads. And then secondly, it will also be grabbing content from your landing page. And this will probably be where the changes will occur. So let's just say a user completes a search term and Google finds out that that search term has some better headlines or descriptions or content from your landing page rather than what is actually in your ad. Google will adjust that headline and pull data from your landing page. So as long as your headlines that you're giving to Google and your landing pages are up to date, there is really nothing to be concerned about. The only problem would be is that if your landing page had an old offer or had some outdated product information, that's really where there could potentially be some issues. But having said that, you should be updating your landing pages anyway. So if you've got good practices of updating your landing pages, there's nothing really to worry about. So now that we know what is changing, let's now have a bit of discussion about why this is changing and how this is already building onto some current changes. Now, this became really, really clear to me a couple of weeks ago when I was reading my area's newspaper, letting them know that they were bringing in some new restrictions or they're proposing to bring in some new restrictions for different types of dog breeds. So being the information nerd that I sometimes am, I started to do some different Google searches. And I wanna show you a recreation of these searches and because this is gonna be really, really highly relevant to what we're talking about now and why Google is bringing in these changes. So as I said, I went through and completed some Google searches. Now to recreate this, what I have done is I've put this into incognito mode and I haven't signed in. And what I started with is I started to go through a searches and I firstly went on American Pitbull Terrier because that was one of the breeds. And you can see from there is that when I did that search, it brought up other searches like American Express, but I then went to that landing page of American Pitbulls. And I wanna show you what happened from here on in, is that I did a search for uh, a Presa Canero, which is a dog breed I hadn't heard about. And as soon as I got to that term Presso, it gave me that information. And then from there, I just wanna show you this, that even when I misspelled J Japan wrong, I'd done J-A-P-N because another dog breed that they were looking at limiting was the Japanese Tosa. Sorry if I haven't pronounced that right for all you dog lovers out there. But once again, this recommendation for Japanese Tosa appeared above 
things like traveling to Japan, which would be a lot more of a popular search. And then, then again, I went to that landing page of the Japanese Tosa. And then I did it again where I typed in another dog breed, which was the, the Fila Brasileiro. Once again, I apologize for the incorrect pronunciation, but that dog breed appeared above the shoe brand or the athletic brand of Fila. And what you can see is happening from here is that as I've gone through and created some similar search, Google is now giving a prompt because it's seeing my behavior that I'm searching about dog breeds. So you can already see, and you may have experienced this yourself, where Google is starting to take into account more user intent. So when you complete a search or a series of searches about a specific topic, Google will then start giving you extra recommendations for, for anything that it feels that is related to that topic. So that's what we're talking about here is that Google is now rolling out that capability more and more into its search ads results. So now it comes to the important question of what does that actually mean for your Google Ads campaigns? And it's important to note that this isn't the first step. Google has been rolling out some other steps and adding in more and more AI capability into its Google search platforms as it's become available. And obviously the biggest one is the change to keyword match types. Whereas previously for a long time, Google would specifically target the keywords which you had entered in. And then we know that in late 2021, Google changed over that meaning to an intent-based meaning. So the first change that needs to happen is that you need to be using less ad groups with more keywords. Let me explain that. I run Google campaign for a gym management software solution. And previously we had run for a long time, three different ad groups in a, in a search campaign because we had the keyword themes broken out into different ad groups for gym management software, for fitness club software, and also for health club software. But because now Google sees fitness club and health club all as the same meaning, we can now just run that in one ad group. And now with this new AI capability, Google would be able to slightly change your headlines if the user is using the search term, whether it be health, fitness, or gym, it would slightly amend that headline so that it's more relevant to the user's search term. And then secondly, we know that another big change has been the introduction of an AI built Google Ads campaign, which is their Performance Max campaigns. Now, what we're talking about here of Google changing the headlines, this is already active on the search element of Performance Max campaigns. And this was brought out in November of 2022 when they released some more AI capability into Performance Max campaigns. And once again, when set up correctly, this can be highly beneficial to the total results that you're seeing in Google Ads. Now, with all these changes going on, the only time that I see people who are not seeing success with Google Ads or they're seeing their results go backwards are people who are trying to use outdated strategies for Google Ads, which are just not working now. So if you wanna stay up to date with Google Ads and be right on the edge of the strategies that are working right now in Google Ads, I wanna invite you to my private paid Google Ads community. And this is my 10X Google Ads community. And in this, what we go through and what you get access to is you get access to monthly masterclass sessions. Now, these are more expanded Google Ads training sessions, which only give access to my Google Ads community. And that covers content, which is not available here on my YouTube channel. You then also get access to live group coaching calls. And on these group coaching calls, we do go through and review real life community members accounts. And then it also gives you access to the community feed. And the best bit about the community feed is that it's a place where you can ask questions about Google Ads at any time. And you don't only get answers from me, you get answers from Google Ads community members all over the world. So if you'd like to find out more about my 10X Google Ads community, plus also get to sample one of my master classes, all you need to do is to follow that link in the description below. And if you'd like to find out more about Performance Max campaigns and how you can use them to grow your business, I want you to go through and watch this video right here. Once again, thank you for joining me. My name is Aaron Young and I'm from the Define Digital Academy. See you next time.